What's good, everybody? This your boy, Jay Shaw from the Behind the Bench Sports Network. Shout out to the bench crew. Let's get straight to it. So I wanted to replay this video, this audio that I made. Um, the first game that the Lakers played against Denver earlier this season, but I also made this video before the season started. See, we got to get to a point where we're listening to people that know what they're talking about. You don't have to agree, but you know that they, they're telling some, some truth and not making up narratives and, and, and lying, you know, like Stephen A. Smith lying about Kobe, that he's not top five, you know? When, when at one time it was Kobe versus Michael Jordan and somehow the media, the LeBron fans put LeBron in there. And this is before his longevity. But you could watch LeBron and see that he wasn't skillful enough to be one of the greats. But this ain't about LeBron. This is the harsh reality and truth about the Los Angeles Lakers, part three. Check it out. What's good, everyone? This your boy, Jay Shaw, coming back at you, hit you with a back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back -to -back video. Um, this video, man, I'm going to talk about the Lakers. And as you can look at this um, thumbnail that I chose, that's how weak they are. Um, the Lakers ain't who you who the media wants you to think who they are. They are who you've been seeing for the last four or five years, a team that misses the playoffs, either an eighth seed or a playing team. And the year that they became a playing team last year, they was not even supposed to be a playing team. That was supposed to go to either um, OKC or Utah, but the league, you know, they didn't want to embarrass LeBron and his legacy, so they – push them into the playoff because let's keep it 100. LeBron misses the playoff for back-to-back -back years, eighth seed the year before that, and a bubble title and missed the playoffs in that first year, it would not look good for LeBron, and they couldn't keep that, you know, Jordan and, and um, that imaginary debate of Jordan and LeBron. <laughs> in the works on, on these networks. So, you know, they had to push the Lakers into the playoffs last year. Um, this year, they trying to feed us and feed everybody, the LeBron media, ESPN, uh, Fox Sports, Magic Johnson. You know, if you're a Laker fan, you can't trust anything that come out of Magic Johnson's mouth. But they trying to feed everybody and make it seem like they're an elite team. But they are who you've been seeing them be for the last couple years. They are a team that hovers around the 11th and 12th seed. 10, 11, 12. That's where they've been hovering at for the last couple years. Even if they made it into the play-in, that's where they hovered at. And the only reason why they make it into the play-in is because the league, like I said, they didn't want to embarrass LeBron by missing the playoffs two, two years in a row. So they had to push him into the playoffs. You know, it's funny how they shot the most free throws in any team, but they was at the bottom of the, of the league when it came to drives to the basket. So how are they getting those free throws? Hmm, is it in the act of shooting? Nope, nowhere close. There's nobody on their team that takes jump shots that could get in, get another player in, in foul trouble. They don't got nobody that's crafty like that. So what they do, they wait till somebody starts to dribble and then they call a foul while they're dribbling. Not even attempting the shot. They're just in a dribble and they call the foul. But for some reason, when the Lakers, when they want the Lakers to be in the game, man, they could be, man, they play defense like flies, flies on boo-boo, man. They, they all up over it. They like jelly on peanut butter. They just going to stick to you and they ain't going to say nothing. You know, if you was watching this Denver game, you could see that they was allowing the Lakers to play aggressive defense. And then it took a minute before they could even call the foul 
on on the Lakers. But, you know, the Lakers are not a good team. LeBron is old. He will slow down. He, it, it, or he's going to try to make people think that he still got it because he's going to stab pad in the first half and then he's going to trail off in the last or in games that they're, they're getting beat. He'll play to like the last two minutes and he'll stab pad to make sure he gets his numbers. Anthony Davis already made a video on him. Don't expect a whole lot from him. I think he's on the decline because of injuries and he's not the same player um, that he used to be. Um, very skilled, you know, give you a game here and there, but he's not that elite um, top five NBA player no more. I don't even think he's really top 10, honestly. Um, but that's just my opinion. And like I said, he will get injured. And then, like I said, if you're watching this Denver game, who said that the jump hook don't work no more in today's game? That that play don't work no more? Because we done watched um, – Jokic jump hook Anthony Davis to like 14 points. And I told people, Anthony Davis is not a great defender when he has to guard somebody with their back towards the basket. He's a better help side defender. And he's okay in stay in front of and staying in front of somebody on the perimeter, but uh, I don't know. I've seen Jokic dribble from the three-point line past Anthony Davis. So that says a whole lot. But anyway, let me get back to the Lakers, man. They, they're they too small. They got no bench. They can't shoot the three. Um, They don't got nobody coming off their bench that could, could, they could give them a consistent 14 points a night. They're not a great defensive team. They're not a great rebounding team. They're not a great three-point shooting team. They're not a great mid-range team. They're not – they don't have a lot of skilled players. Um, Anthony Davis and LeBron will rotate being on the court. You'll rarely see them both sit on the on the bench together because they got to keep somebody on the court. And if they're not letting um, Austin Reeves play like James Harden four years ago and run in to plead people to get to the line, he ain't going to do much either. And the only reason why they keep him on the court is because – if they need to send somebody to the line, that's who they send to the line. That's I'm talking about the lake. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the league. They'll get the memo and say, we need Austin Reeves to start shooting some free throws. And next thing you know, he got about eight. He done shot, you know, um, 16 free throws in a game or something like that from dribble drives. Not, not getting fouled on an attempted shot, just on some dribble drive stuff. And him putting his shoulder and creating contact, which I thought they supposed to they was supposed to end that, but they allow it to whoever they want to, you know, give it to. Um, LeBron don't have no jump in his legs. He's tired already, but this is a guy that gives, you know, he spends a million dollars in the offseason to be in fine shape. And, you know, he'll take a picture with his shirt off and all his all his fans, you know, all his suspect fans will, you know, screenshot it and say, ooh, look at him in gear, whatever. You know, ain't, ain't he chiseled? You know, they, they drool over him like a female. But um, that's here and there. But, man, the Lakers are who they are. Whatever you see, whatever you've been seeing in the last couple of years, they are who they are. It don't matter who they bring in. They're going to try to hit us with the trades. They're going to try to hit us with the Lakers need some, you know, need some players on their team. They don't got nobody. They're going to hit us with that. That's what's going to happen, you know. Um, but the Lakers ain't a good team, man. And if you got your hopes up all high because you're a Laker fan or even if you're a LeBron fan, I'm just keeping it 100. This is my opinion. If you don't like my opinion, start your own YouTube channel. Say whatever you want to say. And it'll be your opinion, your freedom of speech. Or you don't have to listen. You don't have to listen. It's that simple. You know what I'm saying? If you don't like what somebody's saying and you can't really do the you can't do the research and really back up what somebody is proclaiming that's happening with a team or a per particular player, hey, 
you're supposed to be able to come back and come up, come back with the facts. And if that person comes back with some more facts and you can't, then guess what? Don't come back with a laughing emoji because that's not what it is. But at the end of the day, man, I think I done said a lot about this Laker team. They are who we know who they are. They are an 11-seeded team at best. Um, eighth seed when they are being pushed by the NBA. So just keep your eyes on the game. See how they are officiating. See what see what the Lakers are capable of um, being allowed to do and what the other team is only being allowed to do offensively and defensively. And then you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, like I said, it's still the same team that shot 50 free throws versus the Suns last year. So that says a whole lot. And this is the same team that allowed Austin Reeves to shoot 19 free throws and a player that's not no longer on their team. Who was it? What's his name? Oh, man, I can't think of his name, but he shot 14. Oh, um, oh Spurs player. Um, dang, he, he shot about 14 free throws, and he and that was crazy. Lonnie Walker. Lonnie Walker, yeah. Lonnie Walker shot about 14 free throws in, in one game. Two bench players. That shot close to 30 free throws. But, hey, that's here or there. This your boy, Jay Shot. Follow the Behind the Bench crew, JB, Kelvin, Jermaine. Until then, I'm out.